the Lord be with you. It is a joy to be together in worship with you today. We are continuing our series on dragons and disciples, and we have two wonderful stories today. We have one story that is about Jesus and his disciples, and in particular, his friend Peter. Now, we're going to hear about a time when Peter had to be very brave and a time when Jesus did something kind of miraculous. Then we're going to hear a folk tale called The Emperor's New Clothes. Have you ever seen that uh, or heard that story before? We are going to share that together in just a minute. But before we do that, we're going to come together in worship. We're going to share our uh, call to worship, which is a responsive thing. Now, I'm going to offer one of your, uh, I'm going to offer one line, and then you are going to respond. And I'm going to share with you these slides so that you can see what your line is. Let's see if I can get it ready for you to see. All right, here we are. Coming together in worship. Your line is, God teaches us to trust and speak truth. Can you say that with me? God teaches us to trust and speak truth. All right, ready? When we are wondering what to do, when things are not what they seem, When people are being tricky, when the ground beneath us seems shaky, in the midst of all of those things, God teaches us to trust and have faith in God and the power of God's love, and God teaches us to always seek the truth and to look for the truth. Now, our opening song is going to help us with that. It's called Open Our Eyes to See. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in singing Open My Eyes to See. I'll sing the first chorus through one time, and then you can join me. We'll lift our voices in harmony together. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear, open my life to live your calling, open me, Lord, to love, open my eyes, open my eyes to see. We have asked God to open our eyes and our hearts and our lives, and now we are going to come to God in prayer. Now, if you're a reader, I invite you to read along. The prayer is right there in front of us, and if uh, you are able, I hope that you will, and if not, if you're not a reader yet, will you join us with praying with maybe your hands together like this, or maybe your hands like this, and with your heart and ears open, and then you can join us at the end by saying, Amen. Now, let's pray. Dear God, 
Sometimes we have a hard time with the truth. We're afraid it might get us in trouble. We think it would be easier if something else were true. Open our eyes to what is good and true and make us brave, we pray. Amen. Now, the good news of God's love is this. There is no truth so hard or so unwanted or so scary that could ever separate us from God's love. And there is nothing actually in all the world that could separate us from God's love. That is a good thing. That is a wonderful thing that God's love is so big and powerful. And so we celebrate. We celebrate by singing hallelujah. And we celebrate by sharing signs of God's love and peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. We are going to share our Bible story for today. We're going to share this gospel story. Let's see. And it is called Walking on Water. The disciples were just waking up on their boat. They had been out on the water all night. <sighs> Stretch. It was so early, the sun wasn't even up yet. Andrew rubbed his eyes and looked into the fog. Hey, he whispered. Hey, do you see what I see? Ooh, it's a ghost, James cried out in fear. The disciples were shaking in their sandals. They were terrified. Through the fog, they could see the outline of a person walking on the water. It was Jesus. Don't be afraid, it's just me, Jesus said. He waved a friendly hello. If it's really you, Jesus, tell me to walk on water, Peter said bravely. Okay, Jesus shrugged. Come on out, Peter, the water is fine. Gulp. Peter swallowed hard. He placed one foot onto the water. Plop! It didn't go under. He tried the other foot. Plop! He was standing. He kept his eyes glued on Jesus as he took a few careful steps. He walked faster and faster. Splish! Splash! Only his feet were getting wet. Jesus smiled at him. Peter felt the wind blowing on his face. He took his eyes off Jesus and looked up at the dark clouds. He felt afraid. Uh-oh, his ankles were wet. Uh-oh, his knees were wet. Uh-oh, Peter was sinking. Help me, Jesus. Save me, he yelled. Jesus reached out his hand and pulled Peter out of the sea. Why did you stop looking at me? Jesus asked, holding tightly to his friend. Don't you trust me? The wind stopped. They climbed into the boat full of cheering disciples. Hooray! This shows it, they said. You really are the son of God. From that day on, the disciples were excited to tell everyone they met about the power of Jesus. This Bible story has a question here. Would you have been more like James or Peter if you saw a person walking on top of water? Do you think you would be afraid? 
Do you think you would guess it was Jesus? That's never happened to me before. I'm glad, too. I don't think you should try walking on water anytime soon, even if Jesus is standing there with you. But what I like about this story is that Jesus asks his friend if he trusts him. And you know what? Jesus is good for trusting, right? He's good for trusting because he does help his friend when he needs him. And he's always trying to be loving. I think that's good for us to think about who we trust and how we know when we can trust someone. Are they loving? Do they want what's best for us? Will they help us? How do you know if you can trust yourself? Sometimes we have ideas that are good, like making sure that we wash our hands or taking care of the people in our family. Sometimes we have ideas that are not as good. We might think, oh, I can trust myself to climb up on this counter and reach the highest shelf. That isn't always the best thing to trust yourself on. But I think it is important that we learn to trust ourselves. If something doesn't feel safe, if someone feels a little tricky to us, like maybe we think they're trying to not tell us the truth, or get something from us. That's okay to not trust those folks. So we're going to hear a story now, as I said, as part of our Dragons and Disciples series. And this is a folk tale. Uh, it was originally written in the version most of us know uh, in the 19th century, so not quite 200 years ago, and uh, by a man named Hans Christian Andersen. But but the story is even older than that. He heard it in a German folktale, and those folks heard it from a Spanish folktale that was even hundreds of years older than that, from like the 1300s. And there's another version from the 1200s that comes all the way from India. So this story is very old, but I think that you will like it. I'm going to share my screen again. Let's see. Okay, and here it is. You ready? Let's see if I can make it bigger. Long ago, there lived a very proud emperor. He was proud of his palace, which was the finest in the city. He was proud of his city, which was the greatest in the land. Most of all, he was proud of his beautiful clothes, which he loved to parade in before all his people. Every day, his royal men blasted their horns and declared, the emperor is coming. Because of the way the emperor spent the kingdom's money, there was very little money left for others. His soldiers were poorly dressed and often had to beg for food. One day, an official suggested, your majesty, maybe we should pay the soldiers more money so they will be better dressed and never have to beg for food. Upon hearing this, the emperor flew into a furious rage. What, he demanded, are you saying I'm paying my soldiers too little money? What, do you want to be thrown into jail? The official bowed, lowered his head and whispered, I am very, very sorry for what I said. Do you think he should have been sorry? I don't know, he was just trying to tell the truth. The emperor might be the wrong one in this situation. But the emperor said, don't ever insult me again, the emperor warned. Now everyone in the kingdom heard how the emperor acted with the official. Now no one would say anything to displease the emperor. People from far away heard of the emperor's love of clothes. From a far country, two swindlers, that means people who try to um, trick people out of their money, Rex and Max heard the news. Rex said, let's sit by the giant oak tree and find a way to trick the emperor and make ourselves rich. Day after day, they tried to come up with a way to trick the emperor. One day, Rex, Rex jumped up and exclaimed, I've got a great idea. Rex explained his plan. Excellent, Max shouted as he rubbed his hands together. This will make us lots of money without having to work. 
Rex and Max got their weaving tools and their horses and went to see the emperor. I would have thought maybe they were weavers then since they already had all the tools. But as they rode along, Max said, think of all the riches we can get by tricking the emperor. I'll finally be rich, Rex exclaimed. I can't wait until we get to the palace. When Rex and Max came to the palace, the guard asked, what brings you here? We are the world's finest weavers, Rex declared. We can weave for the emperor the most magnificent garments that have ever been made. The garments are also invisible to anyone who is unfit for office. These garments can be used as a test to discover who is fit for serving the emperor. Max added, we know the emperor will be thrilled when he sees the wonderful beauty of these garments. We promise there's nothing like them in the whole world. The emperor will be most delighted to hear about this, the guard said as he quickly went to tell him. When the guard told the emperor about the weavers, the emperor thought, this is great. Not only do the garments have wonderful beauty, but they also have great powers. If I wear these clothes, I'll discover anyone who is unfit to serve me. The emperor ordered the guard, have the weavers make the garments for me quickly. Don't worry about the money, give them whatever they need. Do you understand? The guard rushed to the weavers. Make the emperor these beautiful garments, and quickly, don't worry about the money. What do you need? Every day we will need the best silk and gold thread for these garments, Max said, and we must be paid before we do our work. No problem, the guard said. Right away he got the finest silk and gold threads for the garments. Then he paid for them with large bags of gold coins. We'll be working day and night to weave these beautiful garments, Rex lied. When they went to their workroom, Max said, we need to set up our looms so when someone comes, we can make believe we're working. You're right, Rex said, let's put up the looms. Every day, Rex and Max went to the palace to get more silk and gold thread. When they got home, they hid the silk, gold thread, and gold coins. When the emperor thought about the garments, he became worried. What if I don't see anything? Then I would be unfit to be an emperor. This cannot be. What should I do? Then the emperor exclaimed, I know what I'll do. I'll send my faithful prime minister. I know he's not unfit for office. When the prime minister came into the swindler's room, he did not see anything on the loom. Why didn't he see anything? That's right, because there wasn't anything there. He blinked and he rubbed his eyes and he looked again. He began to shake. I can't see anything, he said to himself. I can't be unfit for office. Rex pointed to the garment on the loom and declared, look at the wonderful colors and the fine gold and silk threads. Is this not the most beautiful garment you have ever seen? Not wanting to be unfit for office, the prime minister quickly declared, I've never seen anything so beautiful in all my life. Tell the emperor what you saw, Max said. The prime minister went to the emperor and reported, I just saw the most wonderful garment that I have ever seen. It is beautiful. I am very delighted to hear this, the emperor said. Everyone began to hear about the weaver's work. One woman said to another, I can't wait to see these beautiful garments. They must be wonderful, the other woman said. Now secretly, the people despised the emperor for showing off. But knowing the anger of the emperor when people disagreed with him, they always praised him, regardless of how they felt. The emperor, wanting to see the beautiful garments, said to his faithful minister, let's visit the weavers. When they knocked on the door, the weavers dashed to the looms. Come in, Rex said. Max, making believe he was holding up the cloak, asked, is this not the most beautiful cloak you have ever seen? Look at the wonderful colors, the beautiful silk, and all the gold. And look at these trousers, Rex said. Are they not beautiful? 
The emperor began to shake. I see nothing, he declared to himself. Am I unfit to be emperor? Now, he might have been unfit to be emperor because he was making all these bad choices for his people, right? Not because he couldn't see anything, but nevertheless. They are magnificent, the prime minister exclaimed. So quickly, the emperor replied, They are beautiful. They are the finest garments I have ever seen. I cannot wait to wear them. On Friday, they will be ready, Rex promised. When Rex and Max came to the palace, it was filled with officials for a royal welcome. Rex and Max showed the invisible garments to the officials and to the emperor. What do you see in that box? Yeah, I don't see anything in there either. I think they are pretending. They're playing a trick. This is the cloak, Max said. Look at the beautiful colors, the wonderful silk, and the fine gold thread. These are the trousers, Rex said. Are they not magnificent? Not only that, Max boasted, but these garments are light as a feather. Wearing them will make anyone feel as if he is wearing nothing. The emperor proudly looked around at those standing around him and asked, Are these not the most beautiful garments you have ever seen? Fearing the anger of the emperor, everyone clapped and exclaimed, They are beautiful. Would the emperor please go into the dressing room? Rex asked as he and Max made believe they were putting the garments away. When the emperor was undressed, Rex and Max began to put the invisible trousers and cloak on him. Do you see the wonderful colors and all the fine gold, Max asked? Are these not the most beautiful clothes you have ever seen? What do you see? I just see his fancy long underwear. Yes, yes, the emperor exclaimed. I cannot wait to parade before the people. These garments will be my greatest treasure. The emperor looked in the mirror and exclaimed, These are the most beautiful garments I have ever seen. I cannot wait to parade before my people. As the emperor proudly looked at his invisible clothes, Max and Rex quickly slipped out the back door, jumped on their horses, and rode away with their treasures to hide in the mountains. As the emperor marched before the crowds, the, pre the people clapped and shouted, the emperor asked different ones what they saw. They said, the garments are magnificent. The, silly <laughs> the silk cloak is beautiful. Your garments are lovely. I've never seen anything like it. The emperor was thrilled at what he heard. However, in the city, there was one family who taught their young son, Frederick, regardless of what others say, always tell the truth. When Frederick saw the emperor in his underwear, he did not cheer. Upon seeing this, the emperor went to him and asked, How do you like my new clothes? Frederick lowered his head and whispered, Your majesty, I see you in your underwear. Those in front of the emperor gasped, while those behind the emperor just smiled. The emperor stood there in shock. The people began whispering to one another, that child is right, the emperor has no clothes. Upon hearing what the crowd said, the emperor knew Frederick spoke the truth. He quickly climbed into his chariot and ordered the driver, quickly return to the palace. The emperor was furious at himself that he had believed the lies of the swindlers. He was also deeply distressed, he was deeply worried, that no one in his kingdom had the courage to tell him the truth except for this one young boy. As they drove back to the palace, the emperor said to his prime minister, that young lad opened my eyes. I have been very proud and selfish. I always demanded that everyone say good things about me. From this day on, I want everyone always to tell me the truth, even if it's painful. I need someone just like that young boy trained as my future prime minister. When we get back to the palace, bring the boy and his parents. I want to speak to them. When Frederick and his parents came, the emperor said, I am very pleased with what you did, Frederick. I need a true and faithful minister to serve me. Since you had the courage to stand up for the truth when no one else would, 
I want you to be trained at the palace to become second in command as my prime minister. I would be greatly pleased, your majesty. Frederick and his family moved into the palace because Frederick always wanted to be honest and learn. He became a wise prime minister and became known as one who always told the truth. The end. I like that story a lot. Now, in some versions of this story, the emperor finds out that he's been swindled and he's just mad at other people, but goes about being very proud still that all the people thought that they should not tell him the truth. Now, I like this version of the story better because in this one, he realizes that the way that he was treating people made it so that they thought it was better to lie than to tell the truth. There's a lot of people who are not telling the truth in this story. What are some reasons people don't tell the truth, I wonder? Sometimes if you've done something you shouldn't, you might not want to admit to it. Like if you had a fight with your sibling or if you took something you weren't supposed to, Sometimes it's hard to hear the truth. I know that our girls at our house don't like it when we tell them that we think they're misbehaving or that they're treating someone badly or that we don't like how they're acting. They act very upset with us for saying something and they say, you're mean, even if all we said was, well, we don't think that's a very good thing to do. It can be hard to hear the truth about ourselves sometimes. Sometimes it makes us feel bad that we've done something that we shouldn't do. But this story reminds us that it's very good to tell the truth and that it's important. And one of the things I like about the ending to this story is that the emperor learned that he shouldn't want to hear only things that make him happy. He shouldn't ask people to lie. And there was something good for the boy and the family, and truly for all the people, when someone was brave enough to tell the truth. Let's have a word of prayer. Good and loving God, you love us all the time. And we are grateful that so many of us have families where we are loved all the time that there is nothing that could separate us from your love or from their love. We pray that you will help us to remember that love always, help us to feel it, and that it will give us the courage we need to tell the truth about ourselves and about our world. Amen. We try to be a community of people who tell the truth about the world and who share our lives. We try to be people who are trustworthy so that other people can trust us. We try to be people who are loving of others and who share what we have. And so the next thing that we do in our worship service today is we share our offerings. Now you could share your offering by going on your phone or your computer and going to the church's website to share your offering that way. Or you could send a check to the church if you wanted to do that way. Or maybe you have other ways that you share what you have in the world. We celebrate all the goodness that we know through God and the way that that goodness wants us to, or helps us to want to share. We celebrate by singing our doxology with uh, Miss Gina, and then we will bless our offerings together. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. And again, if you can read, please pray along with us. And if you don't read yet, will you pray with your ears and your heart open and then join us at the end by saying amen? Okay. Dear God, we give you thanks for all the ways you have shared your love with us. We pray that you will bless the gifts we bring today so that they might do your work of truth-telling in the world. Amen. Our closing song is one of my favorites. It's very simple, and Gina will sing it all the way through, Do Not Be Afraid. And then as we sing it through the next time, she'll sing, Do Not Be Afraid. And you can sing, Do Not Be Afraid. It's sort of a call and response song. So let's join in singing now. Please join me in singing, Do Not Be Afraid. As you go into the world this day, go in the name of the God who made you. Go in the name of the God in Jesus who loves you so much. And go in the name of God in the Holy Spirit who gives you the courage to tell the truth and to live as God's own child. Go in peace and joy. Amen. <laughs>